KHOU 11 News at 5.30 starts now. We start with breaking news in North Harris County. A man is dead. A woman is hospitalized after a deputy involved shooting on FM 1960 at Ella. The sheriff says the man was killed at the end of a police chase when he exited a vehicle armed with a pistol and got into a shootout with deputies. The woman was an innocent bystander who was caught in that crossfire. Her condition is not known. More breaking news, this time in Southwest Houston, police are investigating a possible road rage shooting, which left a seven year old hospitalized. This happened about just before three this afternoon at the intersection of Langdon and corporate. Police say the child was standing on a sidewalk when people in two vehicles got into some sort of altercation. Someone started shooting and the child was hit in the back. Both vehicles sped away. They're described as a gold or gray four door sedan and a blue truck with a ladder on top. Anyone with information should call police. The child, we're told, was stable when taken to the hospital. We will update you as we learn more. In other news, car burglars hit a southwest Houston community, leaving several residents with costly repairs. It happened overnight at the Cattails Townhomes community near the intersection of West Airport and Fondren. Katira Winfrey has more. This surveillance video shows the moment someone breaks out a back passenger window. You hear the glass shatter. Just before this duo spots the camera, moments later, the camera is knocked down. Ours as well as a bunch of our neighbors' cars were broken into last night and the windows were busted out. Katrina Evans and Andrea Miller Hines lives in the gated Cattails townhomes community. They say about a dozen others woke up Sunday morning to find their car windows shattered and items missing. I'm thinking it's the tent that was on my car that saved my passenger window, mm -hmm. but my husband's Hyundai, they shatter the entire driver's side glass. They shared a series of photos and damaged cars inside the gate, but say the suspected thieves also hit cars parked outside the gate. This couple didn't talk on camera, but says cars typically line both sides of the street. Many had already gone by the time they found their window broken while walking their dog this morning. It just felt, felt like being victimized all over again. Evan says just over a month ago, her home was burglarized while she was asleep inside and wonders if these people have been here before. And it seems to be the same set of young men. They're not in a hurry. They're just going car to car, checking doors, breaking windows. Both say this isn't just a violation. Continuing this type of crime could have devastating impacts for the perpetrators. One day you're going to come across the wrong person and that you're, the next time you see your kid might be not so happy. Reporting in Southwest Houston, Katira Winfrey, KHOU. 11 News. The residents we spoke with both filed reports with Houston police. Also, we reached out to property management for comment, but they have yet to get back with us. Houston police are investigating after a man was shot during a pool party at an apartment complex on Cullen Boulevard. It happened last night at about 930. Police say two men got into some sort of fight and started shooting at each other. It's unclear whether the victim was a part of the gun battle or just another innocent bystander. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No arrests have been made. A man has been charged with murder in the death of his wife. He was arrested at a home on Tuffley Street in East Houston. Police say the man called 911 last night to report he had killed his wife. When officers arrived, they found the man lying on some stairs with a gun next to him. He was taken into custody without incident. The body of a woman was found in a back bedroom. She had been shot in the face. No word yet on a motive. White House officials say President Biden has told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the U.S. will not participate in any reprisal strikes against Iran. This comes after the U.S. yesterday helped Israel defend itself against hundreds of Iranian drones and missiles. Christian Benavides has the latest tonight. Yeah. New video released by Israeli Defense Forces shows how fighter jets intercepted Iranian drones and missiles headed towards Israel. In all, 99% of weapons were intercepted by Israel, the U.S., the United Kingdom, and Jordan as they lit up the night sky. Iran and its proxies launched approximately 350 suicide drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles and rockets from Iran, Iraq, Yemen, and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Look at the size and the scale, the scope of what they fired at Israel from Iran proper. You know, more than 300 missiles and drones. They wanted to cause damage, no question about that. 
but they were utterly unsuccessful in doing so. Following the attack, President Joe Biden held a phone call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. CBS News has learned Biden told Netanyahu that the U.S. would not participate in a reprisal strike on Iran. The president's made it clear we're not looking for a war with Iran. We're not looking for a broader regional conflict. And everything we've been doing since the 7th has been designed to prevent that outcome. President Biden met with other G7 leaders via teleconference Sunday over Iran's unprecedented attack, which was in response to an Israeli airstrike to Iran's embassy in Syria. Biden is under increasing pressure over Israel's response in Gaza to the October 7th attack and is hoping to avoid escalation to a wider regional conflict. A CBS News poll done prior to the Iranian strikes showed just 33% of Americans approve of President Biden's handling of the conflict. Christian Benavides, CBS News. Tomorrow is tax day, the deadline to get your income taxes filed. And if you're not ready, be sure to request an extension or risk having to pay a penalty. The IRS said Friday that it had received more than 100 million tax returns with tens of millions more expected to be filed as that deadline approaches. To the weather now, it's another beautiful evening in the Bayou City. A little warm, but we'll take it. Let's turn out meteorologist Pat Kavlin. Pat, it looks like it'll only get warmer this week. Yeah, we are going to see temperatures take a step back as we get into Monday, but by the middle of the week, we are going to be seeing some uh, almost summer-like warmth. 83 the high today, a degree shy of where we were yesterday. Woke up to 63 this morning. Sunset coming up here in about two hours at 748. Live look here from the top of the studios in the Galleria along Westheimer. We're looking to the east. There's downtown there in the distance. Still 80 in Sugarland, 83 for Huntsville and Conroe. 82 at Bush. 76, though, out towards Galveston. The next few days, again, show us stepping back a little bit temperature-wise for tomorrow. We'll only make it to 80 degrees, but then 85 for Tuesday, 88 degrees then by Wednesday, and we keep going up from there. You see where I'm going with this by the end of the week. There's Monday's forecast, though. A lot of cloud cover around. A lot more humidity as well, but Notice the lack of any raindrops. We're not expecting any rain despite the cloud cover for tomorrow with temperatures up near 80 degrees. A couple fair weather clouds out there right now. Otherwise, nothing really to talk about. Even across the state, things are very quiet here. No showers or storms out there. We take it through the overnight. Clouds do start to thicken up. A little more humidity out there. We only drop to about 70 for your low. And then tomorrow, mainly cloudy skies. We pop to 80. We'll see a few sunny breaks for the afternoon, but that's pretty much it. And then for Tuesday, there's going to be a system that passes off to the north. That'll bring the chance for a few showers, I think, well north and west of the city. Uh, temperatures, though, should make it to the mid-80s with some sunny breaks ahead of those showers here as we get through the afternoon. But I do think the worst of that stays to our north. And there's the severe weather threat there going all the way up towards the Des Moines area. We're on the very tail end of this. Maybe an isolated severe storm as you get towards uh, areas that are well north of the city of Houston. But even that, I think, is a pretty low chance. I think it's really just a shower uh, potential for us. And then the heat is on the next few days. Check out these numbers. We stair step our way to yeah, potentially the first 90 degree day of the season. And it's not just one, but a pair of them for Thursday and Friday. The warmth will stick around to Saturday before a cold front cools things down into the second half of next week. So typically our average uh, first 90 degree day arrives in the beginning of May. The earliest we've ever seen is uh, February and the latest goes back to June. Uh, for the overnight, though, 68 degrees with mainly cloudy skies. We'll do 84 tomorrow with those clouds sticking around, but again, with dry weather. There's your seven-day forecast, maybe an isolated shower or storm for Tuesday, mainly north of the city. We'll do 88 then for Wednesday, and then we will push 90 degrees for Thursday and Friday with a mix of sun and clouds, a lot of humidity, making it feel more like the low to mid-90s as well. And Marcelino, I know that you're in the same camp as me. It is too early for that, so we'll work in a cold front for the weekend with a shower and storm chance, and that will bring us back to the 70s by next Sunday. All righty. Thanks, Pat. Finally this weekend, Art Car Weekend, wrapping up with an awards ceremony. Participants in yesterday's Art Car Parade gathered at the Orange Show Center for Visionary Art. Trophies and more than $15,000 in prize money were handed out to winners in a variety of categories. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching our webcast. We're back on TV at 10. We'll see you tonight.